Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop, whoop. Happy Wednesday to each and every one of you. Yes, and we're still in Back to the Basics. So I had con decided to continue this little project of making our sewing machine mat together and going ahead through the entire process so that we can have a finished project by the end of Back to the Basics. So what are we doing today? Well, today we are basting our quilt. Basting. For those of you who are new to quilting, you might be saying basting. What is basting? Are we making a turkey? No, we're not making a turkey. We are basting our quilt top to the rest of the quilt. So when we actually quilt our quilts, there are three layers. We've got the backing, the batting, which is the stuff in the middle, and then we have our topper, which we did last week. And this basting idea is that we're taking those three layers and we're temporarily putting them together so that they will stay together temporarily so that we can get it quilted. Quilting is actually the process of putting the threads, using thread to put the three layers together, which we call a quilt sandwich, okay? So this is a temporary way of holding those three things together. And I will show you, I've already got mine done, and we're gonna walk together on how I did this. But I wanna let you know, with basting, there are several methods that you can use which I've done videos on. Some of them I think I probably need to do again <laughs> because we've grown a little bit and we've, we, we have an understanding now of cameras and lights and, and different things. So come in the future, but until then, you can always check them out. So one of the first ways that you can actually baste your quilt or get those three parts temporary together, holding together, is thread basting. And that's actually taking needle and thread and making sure that the, the quilt top is flat, that the top is flat, that everything is flat and it's gonna lay nice and pretty, but using the thread with a needle to actually get those three layers temporarily together, okay? So thread basting is one. The second idea is you could pin baste. So basically you take, you can take safety pins. Um, you could probably use regular straight pins or they actually have uh, quilting pins, which they're like, they're a little, they're like bent safety pins. So you can pin baste a quilt together, preparing it to be quilted. You can do that. I have never used pins because I don't like them. They get in the way of my quilting and I have to stop and reposition and pull the pin and stop. And I just don't want to go through all that. So for me personally, I don't pin baste, but there's nothing wrong with it. If that is your preferred method, go for it. Don't change if it works for you. Another method is spray basting. And on this channel, there is a homemade spray based video. You can make your own. I will say my favorite though is 505 spray. It is a temporary adhesive. So again, we've got temporary. Uh, and it'll hold those three layers together very nicely. And with small projects, it makes it really manageable. I'm not using this today. I'm gonna to use another method. Um, but the reason is, is because according to the can, it does tell you to be in a well-ventilated area. And because I'm at the quilt shop, my doors are closed, my windows are closed, I'm not necessarily well-ventilated, and I had somebody in one of my classes that is actually allergic to this. The, there's no fume I find personally, um, but whatever it is, she it, it can send her to an asthma attack, not a good thing. So I um, don't use this when she's around, <laughs> love her, but I don't because we don't wanna cause any trouble. So somebody else might be allergic to this. So the last method is the one I'm doing and it's called Free Fuse and it's actually a powder and it's by Quilter Select, okay? Wonderful, wonderful um, adhesive. It's a semi-permanent fusible powder, okay? I'm gonna bring it underneath the camera here in just a second so I can show you a little bit more about it. 
but it is semi-permanent and to be real with you it is actually polyester um, they look like a little salt I call it the salt method but um, if you're allergic to polyester that is something else then that you definitely wouldn't want to use I don't know many people who are allergic to polyester but there are a few and so I just wanted to make you aware that this is a polyester powder okay so that's the method you can use it inside there's no fumes um, there's no overspray it's very easy to clean right because it doesn't get everywhere it goes exactly where you put it so if it goes everywhere it's because of the operator <laughs> ask me how I know <laughs> so um, at any rate free fuse or fusible powder quilter selects not the only one that makes it but it is my preferred brand uh, and then the temper or the spray based thread based and pin based those are the big big ones for basting and getting your quilt top temporarily together holding together preparing it to be quilted okay one of the things that you want to make sure is that it it is in fact flat okay because if in fact there are any crinkles or any kind of uh, ability for the fabric to shift or move, you could get things called puckers or folds. Um, you could actually, ask me how I know again, uh, quilt the backing where it's flipped and so it's not really a sandwich anymore because you've exposed it. So it's real important that whatever method you choose, you keep those fabrics nice and pretty and flat and that way and together so that they don't shift that way you're not going to have any um, puckers or, or wrinkles or crinkles or or anything of that nature so i also want to tell you i think i'm using um 80 20 it could be 100 percent cotton i have a hard time telling the difference sometimes so one of the things about choosing your batting is that you if depending on the quilting that you're going to do it's kind of important so some batting might tell you on the package it might say that you have four inches of quilting space you're allowed four inches on um, and I've recently had this question from somebody so I think it's really important that I address it so what that means is let's say you are quilting a square that makes it easy right they, the biggest, when it says four inches, the widest apart those stitches can be are four inches, plain and simple. So if you had a an six inch square and you just wanted to do a six inch square around it, that is too big for that batting. So it's whatever batting you choose, it's really important that you read the label to see how big those, how far apart those stitches can be. Quilter's Dream is my preferred batting and it is actually eight inches apart for the cotton and the 80-20, okay? So I can quilt up to eight inches apart. Now what happens, why is that important, okay? Why is it important to, to understand how wide apart you can quilt? Well, have you ever bought a comforter from somewhere? had batting in it, right? Had some kind of stuffing in it. And you've used it and you've washed it and you've used it and you've washed it. And then eventually you have a quilt or you have a comforter that's really thin at one area and really thick on the other because the batting has actually migrated to a different location. That's what'll happen. You'll have this migration of batting if you quilt too far apart, okay? So it's real important that you read whatever whatever you use. Make sure that you read how far apart you can stitch, okay? So that you don't have that and it'll last longer. Your quilt will last much longer. Okay, so now that I'm over batting, I'm going to bring you under for just a second. That way. And I want to show you this free fuse, okay? So let me take you over to the un overhead. So this is Quilter Select Free Fuse, and I want to let you know that it does tell you to use medium heat. I actually use a little bit higher. It's a preferred method. It's the way that my iron works best with this product, so you'll have to play with that yourself. 
but I have done it where it was too low and it don't work, okay? It also suggests parchment paper or Teflon paper, so that's really important. This is how it comes if you've never bought it. I would suggest to buy the package where it comes with the applicator and this is what the top looks like. So it does literally look like a salt shaker, at least in my opinion. <laughs> okay. And when I wanted to do this for you so you could actually see what it looks like. Okay. So it looks like salt. So that's, this is why, and, and you sprinkle it. You're going to watch me do this, but this is why I call it the salt method because I feel like I'm putting um, salt on my quilt. <laughs> So you do get it in this um, little container when the first time that you order it, be sure that you do that, okay? And then it, when you need refills, you simply just can purchase a package of uh, refill free fuse powder. So you don't have to buy this over and over again and it, it lasts a very long time as far as the canister goes, right? Very easy to refill. Now this is really funny to me, I always get, I always get a little chuckle reading things on packages because that means somebody has done it, right? So this is an adhesive powder, it does say, and it's not for consumption, okay? So don't eat it. We're using it to baste our quilt, okay? <laughs> but that is Quilter Select Free Fuse. Um, you can do this in your home and you can do a large quilt with it and as a matter of fact currently i have done a video with it but i think a really great video to watch this is alex anderson okay um and she has a video that you can watch her do a larger quilt and she talks about other methods or other things that you can use this product for because it doesn't have to be just for basting a quilt. It just does work fantabulous inside no overspray um it doesn't smell and it is semi-permanent. So what's really good about that, um, let's say that you, when you were basting, and I didn't show this in the clip, but if you were basting it and you messed up, it will pull apart, okay? It is basted, but it's temporary. So now I'm, I'm gonna reheat this and put that back. <laughs> so it stays <laughs> so it's not a forever thing um, and it works really really nice to hold your quilt pieces your backing your batting and your topper all together ready for you to quilt okay so that is free fuse quilter select the method of choice for me today doing the small project so that y'all can see really how this works. So let's get over and let me show you how I basted my quilt top to the other part, to my sandwich, how I, how I did my sandwich. So I'll see you in just a sec. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the backing and the batting. And I basically cut a 27 by 20 and a half inch piece of backing and batting, okay? Yes, it's a little larger and I do this for a reason. Um, my topper is smaller than both my batting and my backing because number one, I wanna know where I'm at specifically and where I'm going, but number two and more importantly, I wanna give myself something to hold on to when I get to the end when I'm quilting. It's my preferred method uh, I understand there are different methods and if whatever works for you is the best, okay? But that is the reason why I give myself a couple of inches on each side to, um, or an inch, well, it's more than an inch. It's two to, two to three inches on each side just so that I can have something to grip when I'm quilting on the ends and near the ends of all of the topper, okay? And again, it lets me know where I'm at. The okay. first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we wanna put just the batting and the backing down so that the backing is facing up, batting is on the bottom. And we're just simply going to pull back a little bit and give a little sprinkle of what I call the salt method, right? A little bit of salt from our Quilter Select Free Fuse, okay? And they tell you that you should have 
medium heat, but I will tell you I'm a little warmer than medium heat, and all I'm gonna do is press my batting down. You're supposed to hold it for about four seconds. And if you worry about getting any of the free fuse on the iron, then you're more than happy to use a Teflon paper or a parchment paper. I just want to get the corner. Now, another thing that's important, if you do use parchment paper, you want to make sure that you remember which side so that you don't flip it over and get some of the sprinkles or the fusible powder on the iron. That's the whole purpose, right? So all I'm doing is pressing it down. I'm gonna move the iron out of the way. So you can, before you go on, you can check to make sure that it is in fact fused, and this one is. So then I turn it around, okay? And when you pull the backing from the other side, okay, it will stop where you stopped fusing. And I didn't get that one little spot. So we're gonna go cattywonkus. Okay. And again, I'm sprinkling a little bit on the batting. Okay, make sure, yep. This side I didn't get very well either. Okay, I'm just going to, in small projects, this is pretty easy, but you can do this with a larger project if it is something that interests you. And one of those containers, you can use too much, um, and what it won't hurt anything. It will just make it so you have to buy more. <laughs> So one of those containers, according to Alex Anderson, should last you about a double. You can get a double quilt, double size quilt out of it, which I think is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna come around here for a minute because I wanna get the sides. And again, if you're worried about hitting any fusible, on your iron, feel free to use the parchment paper. Okay, and you're just gonna keep on going until you get to the end. I think one more hit will be fine, yes. And I did much better that time. A little sprinkle, sprinkle action. You can also put the parchment paper underneath if you don't want it to get on your iron or ironing mat, ironing board, whatever it is that you're using. And it's this easy, guys. So this is the back first. Isn't that pretty? There we go. back is fused, okay? So all we're gonna do is first, oh, I got a thread, and don't pull the threads. <laughs> you wanna snip them. <laughs> you wanna lay it out exactly where you want. If you wanna find the center and find the center and all that, you can, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's a nice, manageable, small project. 
I just want to make sure I'm giving myself just a little on each side. And remember, I like to start from the center. So I'm just going to pull back halfway. And there's that flip stitch we showed last time, right? Now, I will say, if you wanted to know exactly where to stop sprinkling because you're bigger, your bottom's bigger, you could use a little bit of painter's tape. You could use a marker and just give yourself a little outline. And then you'll know exactly where to stop sprinkling. Or you could just cover it with parchment paper. It's all up to you. Uh-oh, got a little bit of thread. Remember, don't pull those. <laughs> that could be awful. So I'm going to basically use parchment paper to make sure I'm good to go. All right. There we go. I'm trying to decide which way I want to do this. I'm going to actually turn it. because I'm right-handed. And to be real with you, let's get out. Let's get that out of there. Okay. So I'm going to stay away from the edges for right now. And I'll come back with it. The parchment paper. I'm going to also make sure that I'm not flipping the seams to make it real bulky. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cover this. I'm really going to hit those edges. If you find that you missed a little corner, you can always add a little sprinkle and hit the corners if you really wanted to be a little persnickety about it. So this time I'm going to switch it around because I noticed it was easier. Look at that big, see like I said, this is mine, I'm not too concerned, but you can always hold yourself um, some snips with you nearby so you can get any of those loose threads but whatever you do don't pull them <laughs> you'll shred away the fab the uh, fabric now I don't know how far to go I'm just gonna eyeball it. it's a nice small project we're good all right right there on the batting. I think we're good. If I missed a spot, we'll find out and I can just hit him again. So, get that out of there. Whoop, stay away from those edges first. And that one needs to go straight down. Okay, then I'm going to hit the edge. Pull this up, pull it up a little more.
making sure not to hit the iron on the batting itself in case there's any sprinkles. And I actually can see a little spot that I missed. Look at that. So all we're going to do is put some on there, get it in there, okay, put it right on top and inside out. There we go. And now she is basted and ready for quilting. So I will see you guys in just a sec. So there you have it. Our quilt sandwich is basted, ready to quilt. So guess what we're doing next week? We are going to do some simpler quilting on our sewing machine mat so that we can get even closer to a finished project. Yay. Today I will be here at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Why? Because I'm in Virginia. Eastern Time alive for a live quilting and answers live Q&A for you if you have any questions or um, you just want to chit chat. I'm also going to show some new product, but at any rate, 3 p.m. today for our live Q&A. Hope to see you there. If you can't make it, don't worry. You can always drop your questions or comments down below the video and we will respond to you. So see you at three. See you next week for some quilting. But until next time, may you continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful. Never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. We love y'all. Happy quilting. Happy hump day. Whoop, whoop. See you all soon.